Hey guys, what's going on? My name's George and welcome back to the Flora YouTube channel. So today we've got a bit of a sad video and it is a sad video because the M3 is going back into the garage again. It's broken, well I say broken, it's not broken, it's just not working great. And the reason for that is that I have a EML light. And the EML light is driven because I have a misfire in cylinder six. So we're gonna get that fixed today. Um, now the EML light came on back in about February and I thought it was a battery issue. I thought it was a low ba low battery issue because it disappeared after like a week or so. And I thought, yeah, the battery's just charged itself back up again. No problems, don't worry about it, everything's fine. But actually it turns out that there was an issue and it is the misfire. And um, it happened at the time that COVID happened, which meant all the garages closed down. And ultimately that means that I've been rolling around with this misfire for about three and a half months now. And I haven't put a lot of miles on the car, I'll be careful about that. But ultimately I haven't been able to get it fixed. But today we're going to select Motorsport. I've heard great things about them. And the best thing is, is they're only 20 minutes away from me. Every garage I ever seem to go to is always two and a half hours away from everywhere that I want to be. So to have a garage that's 20 minutes away is perfect. A little bit of a lie-in. We're gonna go get some Starbucks now and then we're gonna head over. Now the car's actually popped up for a brake service as well, so we can get a minor service done with uprated brake fluid going into the car because I've got a little road trip coming at the back end of August that I'm gonna be filming for you guys and I wanna make sure this car is perfect for it. Shit, speed van. Oh, well, that's a fucking ticket. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. You just can't get into it because they would never understand. Okay, well, that's a ticket. So there you go. Bit of enjoyment for you. It's time to get a coffee. It's too early. All right, let's pick up in a minute. Okay, guys, so we are now at Select Motorsport. So we're going to get the ignition coil changed as well as the eight spark plugs on the M3 because I'm getting that cylinder six misfire that's been causing me so many issues over the last few months. I'm so excited to finally get this done. Plus also massive shout out to Select Motorsport for having us down. They've been really, really, really useful. I'm looking forward to seeing how we can get this problem solved here today. After we've done the ignition coil and the spark plugs, we're then going to move on to a brake service and get the brake fluid uprated in the car as well. I'll show you a bit more information on the product that we're going to be using later but yeah really excited to get working on the car today so what kind of stuff do you um you do here uh yeah so uh we basically try and concentrate on um as many sort of i'd say not awkward but most typical garage wouldn't take projects on um, we take on a lot of engines swaps engine conversions and stuff where we've got a lot of things going on uh, in the background here a lot of k20 conversions and clio's fiestas that kind of thing um pretty much uh, really just trying to make it as easy as possible for customers to come in, right? I've got this idea in my head um, yeah. and try and see that through to somewhat a, a finished conversion. So all the loom and en uh, engine brackets, drive shafts, that kind of thing, anything you need. So they come to you um, like a shell and an idea. Yeah, and yeah, pretty as, as much as possible to try and make it as easy as possible for them to have that idea into turn that idea to like reality, you know? Um, but yeah, generally just about everything, you know, um, as you see the workshops on the different stuff, um, we've got a few customers with uh, race cars that we sort of maintain, spanner check, um, set up, uh, call away to the line, it's a big thing that we do, sort of chassis set up and preparation. And this is our sort of the fabrication area, mess room as you like to call it. New building, um, room, clean room, um, again, obviously trying to keep the dust and everything down as much as possible, you know, no sort of uh, airborne things. But yeah, we do anything from um, gearbox, engine rebuilds, uh, whether that be sort of standard, um, standard engine like these FRRs, they just they just come in for spun shells, spun bearings, so strip them down, investigate, see what's what, rebuild them into a nice, uh, reliable, clean engine. A lot of BMW stuff, but yeah, just a bit, a bit of everything. But yeah, this is this is this is where most of the majority of stuff happens. If you're in the Berkshire area, make sure you check these guys out. I put all their links and everything in the description down below. So yeah, go and check them out. Let's move the car into the workshop that we can get started on this. So hopefully we're going to document all the process and Matt's going to give us some insight onto it so you can see exactly how we're going to install the ignition coils and the spark plugs as well as do the brake stuff as well. So let's get straight into that.
Okay, so here we have all the ignition coils for the M3. Turns out we didn't actually need to take the plenum off to do it. All you need to do is remove the air box and you'll be able to see down here, you just pull the ignition coils out from all the sides and lay them up on the top. They all look okay apart from on the top here. You can see we've got a missing dust cap, but that ultimately doesn't really matter. Now we need to move on to make sure we can change all the spark plugs over, but in the Meet Doria. Have you heard of Meet Doria? So I got told all ignition coils come from factory yeah. and basically then get shipped off to put BMW logos on and whatever. And that's just a blanket, unmarked OEM, OEM coil, yeah. but it's sold for much cheaper, but it's exactly the same thing. So hopefully it works out. So that's quite a relief then really to not have to remove the plenum because that's such a massive element. Like you said, there's um, what eight clips to, to undo as well as the top two bolts to remove all of that. So as you can see, just down there in the ignition coil hole, there's a spark plug down the bottom. So it's gonna get a spark plug socket to reach down in there and then crank that out. We put the new spark plugs in from there and then we'll move on to the brake stuff. Okay, so here we have the old spark plugs. As you can see, they're all pretty blackened, but as Matt tells me, they're not white at all, which is the telltale sign for these being really, really bad. But in comparison to a new coil, you can see actually that they are really worn. I don't think these were the main issue. I think the ignition coil was what was is what was causing us all the problems. But it's good to know that we're putting eight new spark plugs in, and they're actually over tightened in the car already. So to get these in and tighten up to the correct torque. It's going to make me feel a lot better so let's have a look at the car park here at select then so we've got this lovely cup rs renault megan which is probably in my favorite red that comes with renault's it just looks amazing you have the big brembo brake kit as well and this thing just looks like it's an absolute track weapon and i've heard from lots of people that these actually perform really 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 well on track so i would love to have a go on one of these front wheel drive oh and we've even got the Right, well, um, I'm going to try and say this correctly. Akropovich, if that's wrong, tell me in the comments. Akropovich exhaust, which I imagine sounds absolutely phenomenal. And then we come over to this. Now, as you can probably tell, this is going to be my favourite thing here. And this is actually Matt's personal car, a red E90 M3 supercharged. Now, this thing just looks absolutely incredible. And it's obviously up for a track spec. We've got the carbon fibre diffuser down here with extended pipes black m3 badge got the apex 18 inch kind of 359 style wheels with the brembo brake kits on there as well so on the inside of this as well we've got manual non-edc but he's got this got this awesome carbon fiber interior and a flat bottom steering wheel in alcantara which looks really 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 cool i think the bit that i like the most about this car are the recaro bucket seats now these just look absolutely mega the bolstering on them looks really really strong and I imagine from a track perspective, that makes this thing an absolute weapon. Okay, so we've just come back from a outing in this and I have to say it's the most fucking insane car I've ever been in and I definitely maybe want a supercharger now. So that's just incredible. Cheers again for Matt taking us out. That was amazing. So also here we've got a Lotus Elise, another RS but 2010 this time versus 
the 2016 the one that we have here both in similar reds but i think i prefer this red a little bit more even though this is Renault red it kind of reminds me more of the mazda red as well okay with all the spark plugs now back into the engine it's time to put the ignition coils in over the top So we've got the Meat Doria on the right and then the BMW OEM on the left here. Yeah. Now the Meat and Doria is a factory part, they say, that is before BMW put their brand on. So if you ever see those around, it's pretty much identical. You see there's a little change in the pins. Yep, so you, in the pin there, you've just got a little chamfer. Oh yeah. Just as the on the leading edge, rather than the BMW pin is just a, a wide. And it, would, that, would that cause any difference? Or? No, no, that's, no, that will actually, that's probably actually a better some you know sometimes if you if you put on a plug you've got a heavy-handed mechanic and they put on the plug wrong sometimes it can catch or snag on the female part of the plug yep. um so that leading edge will help it just guide in perfect so um yeah so just gotta locate them home you should feel a nice positive engagement when the ignition coil goes on so yeah this this um this end end one obviously nice and close to the bulkhead what i've done here is just disconnected this fuel line just pulled it out of the way and then this vacuum uh, fuel feed can just about slot it in and under and get a bit of a wiggle on. Okay. Yeah, and then obviously remember the plugs. Okay, so that's all the ignition coils and the spark plugs now in the car. Now it's time to put the airbox and all the bits that we took off back onto the car to start it up and see whether the misfire code has gone or not. Now that tells me that sometimes they can write themselves. So if the misfire code kind of is a present fault, then it may still be in the car, but we can clear it out. However, we're hoping and fingers crossed that actually the misfire code will have disappeared now we've changed out all the coils and the or changed out the cylinder six ignition coil and the spark plugs so hopefully when we start it up that eml light will have disappeared because i've been staring at that for about the last four months the code's, code's not come back so... that's still lumpy isn't it Okay, so bit of an issue. So it turns out that meat and Doria ignition call that I bought actually isn't any good. It kind of broke on us. It's not really working. And actually put the car into limp mode as opposed to just an EML light, which we were having previously. So that's a bit of a pain in the ass. So what I had to do is I've had to buy a OEM ignition call from BMW Reading. We're gonna pick that up in a few hours or so. I'm gonna take that Euro car parts ignition call back because it doesn't work. So I know I said at the start of the video, use them, actually don't. Right, that's my advice. Yeah, for things that important, it is important to use the BMW part. And I thought I could chance it, I thought I could try it, and you know what, it was worth a try, and it didn't work out. So I bought a BMW OEM part, and we're gonna put that in. But for right now, we're gonna crack on with the brake service and the brake fluid change. Then I'm gonna go and pick up this ignition coil, and then we're gonna do that again later on with the OEM one and see what happens. So yeah, disappointing, but you know, these things happen, and Select have been great, and we're just gonna crack on with the brake stuff, and then we're gonna come back later on and change that ignition coil out. So here we have the brake fluid that's going into the car then. So we've got RBF racing brake fluid at 660. This is kind of uprated from OEM, and we've got a boiling point of kind of 325 degrees C, and a wet boiling point of 205. Now this should really kind of give us better pedal feel, but also less brake fade. And alongside with the EBC yellow stuff brake pads that I've got, we should really kind of hone the braking of this car. And as I've spoken about multiple times before, braking is the bit of this car that I kind of hated the most. So with the bedding period of the yellow stuff pads now done, and this uprated brake fluid, then this car should be an absolute stopping monster.
So yeah, all that is, is literally just taking all the old stuff. Which is actually pretty good. Mm. Like that's that's the worst I've seen. That's definitely not bad at all. No. Um, yeah, just taking just taking all the old stuff out of the reservoir, then you can bleed. Rather than having to wait and bleed through all the stuff in the old stuff in the reservoir, you just get a nice clean. Yeah. Clean mix. That is, yeah, your reservoir. So no no, at no point will yeah will the fluid from the caliper go back into the reservoir okay. unless you purely actually push the pistons. Um, you know, it's just a, it's just like a syringe. You know, you put the piston down here, you pull the pressure, and that will then fill the reservoir. But yeah, at the moment it will just be bleeding what's left. Yeah, once once we've done that, what we've got is a just a little Sealy pressure bleeder, nice and cheap to buy. Yeah. Essentially, what that does, um, you uh, screw that on the cap, screw that on the reservoir. Pump it up to um, a, a one bar, two bar. Generally, check the condition of your reservoir before you do it because um, old VWs and stuff, well, any old car, but old plastic, you know, um, will not take one to two bars worth of pressure before it, it blows up. So you really got to be quite uh, wary. These BMW ones are built quite strong. Obviously, it's quite new, so they're not too brittle. But um, yeah, judge it before you start putting any sort of pressure down. unscrew that fluid nipple, let it run through. Um, the fluid is actually really good, so it's actually gonna be quite hard to tell when the good stuff starts coming through, but yeah. theoretically we've, we've the reservoir's drained, so it relatively should it should be starting to pull fluid through relatively quick. Yeah. Okay guys, so the brake fluid has now been completed. We've put the new uprated brake fluid into the car, bled the old fluid out of the reservoir and out of the calipers so we've got new fluid throughout the car. Matt's just putting the wheels back on the M3 and we're going to head to BMW Reading to go and pick up this new ignition coil as well as to Euro car parts to return the shit one. So it is what it is, you try new things with cars, try new parts but ultimately it didn't work so let's go and finish up the M3 here, put the airbox back on and then we can move to BMW Reading so let's go. Okay, right, so I'm back at Select Motorsport now. I've been to BMW and I've picked up a new ignition coil. Now, this was not cheap. So this ignition coil in total cost me 140 pounds and 45 pence. Now the meat and Doria one cost me 45 pounds. So this is 100 quid more. However, this will actually work. So I'll just go back to Select. Everything else has been done on the car. We just need to replace the ignition coil and then we should be good to go. Test the car, make sure there's no misfires and then yeah, so let's crack on. Okay, so that's all been changed now. We do still have uh, an EML light on the car, but we're just going to clear that off, and then hopefully that will be uh, that'll be all sorted. Right guys, so great news, the car is fixed. There are no EML lights on my dashboard and I am a happy man because I have not seen this dashboard without engine lights on for a long time. So I'm very happy about that. Now, it was a shame that the Meet Doria call didn't work and that was a mistake, but do you know what? It, lessons learned, right? Lessons learned. I thought I could cheap some money on it because apparently they're the same part, but the part just wasn't the same. It looked the same, but it didn't work the same and actually when we put it into uh, we put it over the spark plug into the engine 
then as we tried to remove it, it kind of broke and the bit at the bottom fell off. And yeah, it just ca was causing more issues in the car than the original OEM one that was giving us the misfire. So immediately we had to take that back. So it's not a big deal. Euro car parts refunded me my money. That's not a problem. But then I had to drive to Reading to go and spend 140 pounds on another ignition call. But do you know what? doesn't matter because the car is fixed and that's all that matters so for my road trip at the end of august the car works we've got our rated brake fluid we've got ebc yellow stuff brake pads we've got no engine troubles and the car is working great so i'm very happy and yeah Oh, absolutely over the moon. So thanks again to Select Motorsport. I'll link all their stuff in the description down below. But also the VTEC Turbo Mini guy, not sure if you've heard of him, but he's the one who owns that crazy Mini Cooper that went unofficially gassed a few weeks ago. He actually works there. So kind of just catching up with him about that car. So if you've seen that officially gassed video on the Mini, it's this guy and it's VTEC Turbo Mini guy. So go give him a subscribe, go check out his videos. That Mini is crazy. And hopefully him and I can do some videos in the future on it because that would be awesome. So yeah, great day, long, but great day. It's also like 35 degrees and it's been extremely hot. But yeah, thanks to the guys at Select, they've really helped me out and I will definitely be coming back here. So if you're in the Berkshire area and you have a project car or performance car you need some work done to, please go and check them out. Really, really highly rate them. I will be coming back. So that's it for today's video. If you stayed this long, please like the video so that I know. And if you're new here, as always, please subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed at this point, what are you doing? So I shall catch you guys in the next one. All right, have a great week. Ta.